uh, Bitcoin, uh, sort of the harbinger for for uh, crypto, up 10%, good month. And of course, there is the speculation about uh, uh, a potential approval of a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, that got people excited. Um, so, But the other thing we'd like to um, reiterate is we saw Bitcoin take off from 19,000 to 30,000 when the regional bank crisis uh, was uh, in full uh, force in March, April. And that told us that Bitcoin is a flight to safety currency. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against deflation. Deflation presents counter, counterparty risk, uh, counterparty risks uh, that uh, do not exist in the world of Bitcoin. You heard it right there from Kathy Wood herself. Bitcoin is a great hold in a deflationary environment and an inflationary environment. So whatever you think is going to happen in the next couple of years with the economy, Bitcoin is an international asset. And if you're not holding any BTC, it's time to do some more research, dive into it, and put some BTC in your portfolio. Crypto fam, welcome back to the channel. Aaron here coming back at you with another cryptocurrency video today. Today is going to be a good one. We're going to be going into why this next Bitcoin bull run will be different from every other bull run before and how we could potentially see really huge price gains for BTC going forward because of some on-chain analysis. Stay tuned for that. We'll also be checking out some other clips, some pretty good ones. But let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Make sure to watch to the end and like if you found any value. Checking out this clip here from CryptoCon. He says, previously, I would have said that the Bitcoin could only see a bull run after the happening. But data keeps telling me something different. The same trigger for every bull run parabola has flashed a double retest of the golden 1.09 mayor multiple line. So you can see here in this chart that we're looking at. Every single time Bitcoin blasts off, you can see right down here, it makes a double retest of this line. So you can see it double retested here and then has some huge price gains. Did the same thing here and Bitcoin had some huge price gains. Back here in 2017, it did the same thing. Huge price gains for Bitcoin. We're seeing the same thing right now in 2023. So does that mean we're going to see some huge price gains for Bitcoin over the next year and a half? According to the mayor multiple line, we could see some higher Bitcoin price action. Now, the Bitcoin bros definitely believe in the Bitcoin halving cycles. So normally Bitcoin doesn't peak until a year and a half after the halving, which is going to be April of 2024. So we won't really see that peak until quarter three, quarter four of 2025. That is historically how Bitcoin has performed. But if this is correct, we could see Bitcoin blasting off way before that. And then you can see here, 70% of Bitcoin supply has not moved in over a year. A new record high. The supply shock is coming. We'll be looking a little bit more at that here in a second. But just think about this, guys. There's a lot of people who believe in BTC. They're not going to be selling for a very long time. They have diamond hands. They've been holding all the way through 2022, 2023. The Bitcoin bros are some of those people. And there's a lot of us out there. And as more people get orange pilled, as more and more people continue to opt out of the fiat system, dollar cost average into Bitcoin, buy into BTC, that supply shock will come, which will eventually lead to higher Bitcoin prices. It's basically just digital math. And you can see here from Santiment, they say Bitcoin exchange supply has now fallen to its lowest level since February of 2018. Traders continue moving Bitcoin to sub custody during the uncertainty surrounding Binance and Coinbase. As long as these SEC lawsuits loom, this trend should continue. And this is true, guys. After the last halving, we've been telling you that the Bitcoin balance of exchanges has continued to plummet. There just isn't enough Bitcoin to go around to these exchanges there anymore. Over the first 11 years of Bitcoin's life, the exchanges were accumulating more and more Bitcoin. Now they're losing more and more Bitcoin. After that halving, they haven't been able to keep up with the demand. So eventually... When these halvings continue to happen, the exchanges are not going to be able to get more Bitcoin and we'll be going into the diamond hands and the exchanges just won't have a lot of Bitcoin left on their balance sheet. And here's a thread I wanted to share with you from Credible Crypto. He says, 70% of all Bitcoin in existence is being hodled and has not been sold for over a year. That number has only increased through 3AC, the FTX collapse, and recent actions against Coinbase, Binance, 
from the SEC. And I know these Twitter posts keep talking about FTX drama, the Celsius drama. That happened around November of 2022. So yeah, there was a lot of Bitcoin that fell off exchanges. You can see that right here during that time period. But after the halving in 2020, the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges has continued to plummet. This is before any of the FTX stuff, any of the Celsius stuff, any of the lawsuits against Coinbase or Binance. But as that's happened, we can see it has definitely made the cold storage even more popular with Bitcoin holders. But even if we look over the past three years here, since that Bitcoin happening happened, we can see we are hitting lows, new lows, since we've been in this reaccumulation to cold storage away from the exchanges. As we've started that, we are hitting new lows right now, guys. And this is going to continue to happen as these halvings go on. There won't be enough Bitcoin for the exchanges to even get from the miners. And if you guys are interested in Glassnode here, we do have an affiliate link in the description below. You can basically get Glassnode for free, but if you want to see some of the more advanced filters and dashboards, they have it for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and basically a lot of other cryptos. You can see some stablecoin stuff here. You can see like the stablecoin balance on exchanges. There's a lot on Glassnode. There is an affiliate link in the description below. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Let's go ahead and get back to this tweet thread. And then Credible Bull says, There is less access supply available than there has ever been in the history of Bitcoin's existence. So what does that mean? If the supply continues to constrict as it has been, and those hodlers are not selling, regardless of the crash of some of the biggest VCs firms in the space, regardless of the crash of the second largest exchange in the world, and regardless of the SEC and their enforcement actions, then it is inevitable that the price is going to rise to new highs. And he thinks it's going to happen sooner than anyone is expecting. People keep saying that they expect months of sideways actions that allow for the accumulation until the happening in 2024 which should lead to new all-time highs in 2024, 2025. This is what we were talking about earlier, a year and a half after the halving, that's when Bitcoin tends to peak. But the reality is clear and can be summed up by the image below. Accumulation has already occurred. More Bitcoin has been accumulated by holders more than ever before. The accumulation phase that so many are waiting for, expecting, has already happened. This is simply another factor piece of evidence that aligns with my thesis of new all-time highs this year. So he's very bullish. He believes we'll see a $70,000 Bitcoin sometime later this year in the next six months. And everybody has been talking about this Bitcoin spot ETF. Once that gets approved, a lot of money is going to flow into BTC. But to be honest, guys, we really don't even need that to happen. I think if it does happen and when it does happen, it is inevitable at this point. It will definitely lead to more money piling into Bitcoin. We don't need it. Look at this. Bitcoin shrimp with less than one BTC are stacking SAS at a rate of 33.8K Bitcoin per month. The issuance for Bitcoin every month is 27K Bitcoin. So for one new coin, shrimp, this is just shrimp with less than one BTC, are taking 1.25 off of the market. Crazy conviction on display. There are more Bitcoin believers now than ever before. Retail investors are dollar cost averaging in the Bitcoin, buying up the Bitcoin, putting it into cold storage, learning about the power of BTC. This is one of the most bullish things that I have seen for Bitcoin in a very long time. This is my personal opinion. We know the big players are coming. We have the corporations like Tesla and MicroStrategy to have Bitcoin on the balance sheet. But now the retail investors are buying Bitcoin after Bitcoin fell from 70000 all the way down to $15,500, they're continuing to buy BTC. This is very bullish, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. And I want to end today's video checking out a clip from Jack Dorsey's talking about Bitcoin and why it's important and what he sees in the future. But let's go ahead and play the clip here. Look at like this hammer that you have in Bitcoin and all the nails around you. And, you know, maybe um, the issues with the Fed are, are one such nail. And maybe the military industrial complex is another such nail. Maybe world peace is another such nail because of X, Y, and Z reasons. So I, I don't think Bitcoin causes world peace, but I do believe that the ideals behind it, the um, this shared 
policy, um, this uh, clear law that can be read by anyone and altered and brought to the market as an alternative for people to decide if they like or not is really, really important to get to world peace. Mm -hmm. And I think those ideas and ideals um, built in and continuing to evolve within Bitcoin are really, really important. So it, it's not what got me to Bitcoin, but it's certainly what keeps me there. I was, but if the CIA <laughs> supposedly killed our president, which destroyed the soul of our country because he was that threatening to everything we just described of like this profit-seeking war, credit-based thing that yep. was like a, this monster. Like, do you get worried that the CIA is going to kill you? Or like... I don't... It doesn't matter. Like if the CIA... If the CIA kills you? It wouldn't matter. I'd be sad. No, no, no. I mean... <laughs> I mean, to the ideals that we're building on, that, that's the power of Bitcoin mm. is like... And, and things like Nostra and these open protocols is that it, it doesn't matter if any one individual is taken out. Totally. You have to take out all the notes. Totally. You take out all the notes, all the people associated with it, and then you truly get it. And that's what makes it powerful. So the, the, the target, me as a target becomes far less interesting because taking me out yeah. or, any, or, or you out because they see Bitcoin as a threat and you a leader in Bitcoin actually doesn't impact Bitcoin whatsoever. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. And if, if I die tomorrow or if I'm assassinated tomorrow, like... Bitcoin moves on yeah. and, and as it should, as it should, like it does not impact Bitcoin at all. And, and that's a beautiful thing for humanity. It's not beautiful for me. Maybe it depends on what's on the do other side, get, I guess. Do you get <laughs> nervous about that shit? No, Ever? I don't think about it. I, yeah. I mean, I just like, you can't live your life thinking about that. Yeah.